In the world of obstacle course racing, this is the Mecca. World's toughest mudder. 21 punishing obstacles in a stretch of unforgiving desert. It is a race designed to push an athlete to the breaking point and beyond, lasting for an insane 24 hours. For every competitor who takes on this challenge, there is a different motivation. But ultimately, they seek the same thing, a grueling test of body and mind that redefines limits and offers redemption. With the more impossible the task, the more euphoric the sense of accomplishment. All day, baby! And the deeper the sense of self-discovery. 1,500 competitors will take off at the start and loop the treacherous five-mile course. 24 hours later, winners will be crowned in three divisions, men's, women's, and team. The team that runs the farthest while completing at least 100 miles will win $100,000. Not all are in it to win. Some are looking to simply survive the toughest 24 hours of their lives. Yes, you can! These are their stories. And this is the road to world's toughest mutter. While millions compete in obstacle course racing, or OCR, just a few can actually win a race like World's Toughest Mudder. Ryan Atkins has won World's Toughest three times and is the only person on the planet who has completed 100 miles at the event in Las Vegas. This year, he's joined forces with John Alban to compete for the $100,000 team bonus. Their main rivals are Robert Killian and Chad Trammell, Trammell shocked the OCR world last year when he came out of nowhere to win World's Toughest Mudder. Just gonna do some rounds of heavy carries with some uh, kettlebell and weight work in between. Being this close to the mountains and also the water, it's kind of just perfect for me. Can't find many places where you're, where you have this. For Chad Trammell, the victory in 2015 was a huge surprise. 95 miles in his first ever world's toughest race. Evidently, Trammell's outdoor training regimen in his hometown of Anchorage, Alaska, is perfectly tailored for the race even though he spends the better part of his days in a different kind of practice. How's it going? Is that feeling pretty numb in there? Yep, good. Have they even talked about me while I'm gone? Yeah. <laughs> Great. The adventures that you do and you, <laughs> and you put on your cape and <laughs> put on your mask. Right. <laughs> so full-time I'm a dentist and I work at Murphy Family Dental. I've been here for two years and I've been a dentist for six years total. Does that still feel pretty normal? Yep. Good. Great. All right, should be all set there. I love working here, but there are definitely days where you know, it can be a little stressful. And so when I leave work and then driving out to the mountains, just a great feeling of anticipation, knowing that I get some alone time and me time out in nature like I like. Trammell began as a cross-country runner, but that love of nature propelled him to obstacle course racing. The passion for the outdoors is what drives my desire to get out and train and, and just be outside. It's all part of one big picture for me. People talk about runnable trails and then there's Alaska runnable and it's a whole different thing. In these woods, especially this time of year, there are tons of moose out, so that'll make it interesting too. The elements in Alaska definitely give me an advantage when it comes to these races. The races are designed to get you out of your comfort zone, but my everyday training gets me out of my comfort zone. It's pretty brisk. 
the uh, the first two minutes are always the worst, and it starts feeling a little better as you go. Get used to it, but it's hard not to in the first couple minutes not just throw in the towel and say, you know, this isn't gonna happen. But it's nice to know that after you've done a few times, this guy start feeling better. I feel like a lot of people think that my race last year was a bit of a fluke and I can't help but to question that a little bit myself. My focus has been on this race this year a lot more than last year. I made a special effort to be doing big days when I'm already tired because that's what it comes down to is it's not what you can do the first half of World's Toughest Mudder, it's what you can accomplish once you're already mentally and physically exhausted. I'll go twice a day running, add in some strength training, it adds up to about 20 to 25 hours a week usually. I think it's more of a race against ourselves and against that 100 mile barrier. Eventually someone's body's gonna give out and I hope that's not mine and it's not Robert's. Robert is Robert Killian, who will be Trammell's partner in the team event at this year's race. Killian lives in Boulder, Colorado. He only recently began training full-time for obstacle course racing, which is a sport that fits well with his background as an Army Green Beret. How I got started in running in OCR was through the military. For me, you know, it was just like, you know, I've been training for this for 12 years military experience. I just never knew it was an event. You know, I was just looking for that next thing. So then I, you know, when Colonel Collins contacted me, he was like, hey, you know, obstacle course racing, I think, you know, with your skill set, you could really dominate the sport and do well at it. So yeah, I signed up and uh, that's how I got started. All right, let's hop back up here. Good? All right. Yeah, that's great. Killian has embraced a scientific approach to his training, working with the University of Colorado Performance and Sports Center to optimize his workouts. I think it's important, especially as a professional athlete, that you know, um, your body's limitations, you know your threshold, you know your heart rate zones, and those are kind of the things I focus on and uh, that we do here at the Performance Center. This um, mixing chamber, from analyzing the, um, the gas exchange, and I can figure out how many calories he's getting from fat versus how many calories he's getting from carbohydrate. They help me out tremendously with my training. They'll take my VO2, they'll do my um, running physiology, and really tell me, okay, this is where your blood glycogen levels are, these are your lactate thresholds. So that's so important as an athlete to see how efficient you're running. You know, knowing that data is crucial to being a professional, to taking it to the next level. There's plenty of glycogen, this is connective tissue. That looks really, really good, excellent. You're out there doing a 24 hour race, you know, it's world's toughest mutter and you, you're definitely asking yourself like, why am I doing this? I, I got to that point last year, I was like, I'm never coming back. But I mean, it's worth it in the end. You set a goal, you know, and you, you go out and accomplish it. And that's what obstacle course racing is about. Of course, Ryan Atkins is out there. He's gonna be on a team. We've battled each other all season, so I know we're starting to become, you know, a rival, you know, competitors, and uh, it's just going to be another, you know, opportunity for us to go head to head. I never came to the Sport Medicine and Performance Center last year here, and so the knowledge base that I have this year, I think, has just really helped prepare me to uh, to take on this challenge. Tough Mudder Inc. was born just six years ago in a dorm room at Harvard Business School. Now the company employs 150 and is headquartered in a new office in the heart of downtown Brooklyn. The idea for Tough Mudder when I was studying at Harvard came from doing a triathlon in Boston and the zipper on my wetsuit jammed and I turned to the guy next to me in the transition zone and I asked him, can you, can you yank on it? And the guy said no and I thought, well, there's something wrong with an event that's so much about the individual. Dean, who is a former rugby player, decided to create an event where success depended on collaboration. So right from the start, we were very clear about the goals and the mission of Tough Mudder. We wanted it to be about teamwork and camaraderie, but also about having fun and not taking yourself too seriously. So the first event 
It was in a ski hill just outside of Allentown, Pennsylvania in May of 2010. And we were hoping, probably very optimistically, for 500 people. And as it happened, we tapped into something huge. We got 5,000 people sign up for this thing in five weeks, which just blew me away. Those 5,000 participants have grown to over 2.5 million in almost a dozen countries around the world. But there were a few in search of something bigger. And in 2011, Dean introduced a new event, one that was tougher, longer, and more extreme than anything ever done before on an obstacle course. He called it World's Toughest Mudder, and it has become one of the elite endurance events in the world. So the first World's Toughest Mudder was in English Town, New Jersey. It's very, very cold in the winter. In November, it's brutal. The water freezes over, we had to go in there in waders with rebar and smash it up. So the first event, 1,500 people. One hour into it, 90% of people had already dropped out. Two years later, they moved World's Toughest Mudder to Las Vegas. They weren't breaking up ice in the desert, but there were other challenges. In Nevada, in the desert, you have the most extreme conditions. During the day, it's so hot, even in November. But at nighttime, you get the dust storms and you get the cold temperatures, and it really tests you in every single way. World's Toughest Mudder is the apex, the pinnacle, the top of the mountain. It's like Tough Mudder times infinity, the teamwork to infinity. It's everything that you can imagine Tough Mudder to be, but just like through the roof. My name is Coach, and today I get to be your coach. Where my first time mudder's at? Along with the explosive growth of Tough Mudder came a unique culture. It is symbolized in many ways by these two, Coach and E-Rock, the Tough Mudder warm-up guys. At a Tough Mudder event, people come to, to my zone, the warm-up zone, uh, with a bit of little nerves, a little anxiety. So I get them fired up, get them loosened up, get them feeling fantastic, and send them out on the course in like a nice fiery fury. You know, fitness is, is fun, and fitness is a lifestyle. And Tough Mudder is that. It is fun, and it is a lifestyle. My job is to really make them feel that from this moment forward, it's a team building event. I mean, that, that you have literally each other's backs, that we, that we move through this thing and we accomplish it together. There you go, Mudders! That's what I want to hear, and that's what I want to see. From the start line to the finish line, we're going to work together. Everybody finishes today. Here we go. Hell yeah. Give me some. The first part of the job is actually in the warm-up zone. The other half of it is actually inspiring, pushing, motivating, and getting pushed out on the course myself. I got you. Hold me tight, brother. Hold me tight. You got, I got you. Okay. I got it. You got it, dude. Just like that. Awesome. Well done. That was great. Good job, man. Good job. You feel all right? What I get back and what I get to give to these folks and the interaction in between there, you know, it fulfills such a deeper part of my soul. Motivating and inspiring people, oh my gosh, like you, you, you can't even, you can't even put a price tag on that. I've never been to a Tough Mudder yet that hasn't moved me emotionally to, to giant goosebumps, to tears, seeing human beings be amazing human beings. And, and that's what brings me every single weekend. Last year, Coach and E-Rock decided to take on World's Toughest Mudder. They completed 50 miles over the 24 hours and exulted in every struggle they encountered. When I did World's Toughest, I, I showed up there kind of nervous. The furthest I'd ever gone in my life was 20 miles, and then I experienced this event. And it's like nothing else I've ever done. Now, in 2016, every regular Tough Mudder event they run is training for World's Toughest. No one has looked this good with a man on their back. The World's Toughest Mudder is truly the ultimate test of the human spirit. I want to go back out there and really see how much I've learned from it. I want to get beat up because when, when, I, when I get that feeling, when I've been pushed to my absolute limits, it's like the world opens up in front of you, you dig deeper, you learn more about yourself. So we want to say that this is the farthest we've ever gone. We want to go one step, one mile, five miles longer than we went last year, and we want to crush it. 
will be 10 new obstacles at this year's World's Toughest Mudder, but also plenty of old favorites. None more popular, more original, more entertaining than the Block Ness Monster. One of my favorite obstacles is Block Ness Monster, and it's teamwork defined. You're in a pit with water that's about chest deep or higher, and there's a big rotating cube. The idea is to kind of get the block moving and never let it stop. So as you, you know, one person, you know, is on the other side, um, you know, pulling it down, another person will just grab on to the handle as it's rotating, and their body momentum will keep it spinning. We kind of invented it by accident. The initial idea would be that we'd run across it and it could drop you off on either side. But then people fell in the water and they tried to get back on it. We just observed people having so much fun trying to get back on it. And a light bulb went off and we said, actually, that could be a pretty cool obstacle. And I guess if you were, you know, Superman with huge biceps, you could probably like do it yourself. But for the most of us, you can't do it by yourself. And it's everybody has to be together and you have to be in sync. So you have to be communicating and talking to each other. Next person, next person. And that just kind of is tough mutter in a bag. The Block Ness Monster is legendary to Tough Mudders and represents the innovation and energy that go into designing the world's toughest course and its outlandish obstacles. Five months before race day in Las Vegas, Tough Mudder holds its first of several location scouts. The expectations from every competitor are absolute, which means the course has to be somehow better than the previous year, somehow harder, somehow more unforgettable. This is the, the first planning trip for World's Toughest Mudder 2016. We're getting the lay of the land, designing an entirely new course. We've got about eight to 10 new obstacles this year for World's Toughest Mudder, so we've got to find a spot for each one of those. So we hope to leave here with a, a complete obstacle list and a course that's ready to go. There's two ropes in there. We've got a really cool obstacle called the grappler, where you basically have to use your own grappling hook to get up on top of a cliff. There will be your materials on the ground, and you'll have to figure out how to get up on top of the cliff using those materials. So like a 25-foot throw. Okay. It's kind of weird to do from here. You've got to go like that. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Beautiful. I would climb and use that. Let's do it. Let's see. Use it just as a... Yeah, as yeah. a... Yeah. <laughs> This year's gonna be, you know, the, kind of the biggest and the best world's toughest we've had yet. The goal of this week is really leave here with a really great idea about where everything's gonna go. There's a vision here. We still have to sketch it out, but the vision, the vision is there. The build is not there yet. We'll get it, we'll get it. <laughs> Got him, hot. Oof. The unquestioned centerpiece of the world's toughest course in Las Vegas is this. The cliff jump, 35 feet into an ice cold lake. It's so brutal, many competitors opt out of it, accepting a penalty instead. But this year, the organizers are plotting ways to make the punishment for bailing on the jump worse. And they seem to enjoy these exercises in the diabolical. So the cliff is something we've had for the past, it'll be three years now. Uh, we had two obstacles as a penalty last year. We're gonna try to do a penalty run this year that we wanna make sure it takes around three to four minutes to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll run up. Oh. Yeah. Good. Two people run the penalty lap, while the other two complete the jump as it's designed. That was the first time I've done it. How's that? That was good. Yeah. Where'd we come out to? Three minutes, 40 seconds. I think our goal should be to add two minutes to that, at least. Yeah. I think you should really have to decide whether you want to do the cliff or you want to take the penalty. Yeah. Like, and it's got to be a real penalty. Yeah. Let's okay. go. When it comes to the world of obstacle course racing, there are very few athletes who can make a living off their podium finishes. But for the past two years, that's exactly what Ryan Atkins and John Alban have done. Between the two, they share over 100 individual first place finishes in the OCR world. 
but now the Tough Mudder changed its rules to allow two-person teams. The two toughest individual athletes have joined forces and have their sights set on the $100,000 prize. John just seemed like the natural fit as a partner because um, him and I both worked really well together last year. The two of us had kind of the easiest time out of uh, everyone. We thought that we could kind of feed off each other's energy and uh, you know, do even more this year. It's hard to find friends who will dedicate themselves to 24 hours of misery. So John's an awesome choice because he's oh, he's such a positive person and he's quite laid back um, and he's an amazing runner. He's got to be one of the best in the world. So John and I live pretty far away, him in Norway and myself in Canada, but um, we keep in touch online and we're always kind of talking to each other and you know seeing what each other are doing for training. I think we both trust each other to train the ways we know works for our bodies and as long as we're both in the best shape possible um, when it comes to race day, we'll both be really happy. Being that we're preparing specifically for World's Toughest Mudder now, uh, it'll be a large focus on, you know, just going out and, you know, running for, you know, three, four, five, six hours. They don't get to train together often. We've seen John at three or four races throughout the year, so when they get together, they train as much as they can. But I don't know that, you know, they have to train together every day to be successful. So the main thing Ryan brings to the team experience, I think this is the fourth time he's going to have competed in Wells of his mother. So he has been, he's spent more time on that sort of course than anyone else. I think that as I maybe have my lows in energy, he will help pull me along. And then as he has his dips in energy, I'll help pull him along and we can kind of help each other where we can. So it'll be a, a really good kind of team dynamic for the two of us. For every elite athlete entered in World's Toughest, there are dozens of others who arrive in Nevada with the simple desire to prove something to themselves. Tiffany Ob is a single mother who lives near San Diego. Her path to the start line and a new life began not long ago, just after she received some devastating news. Last August, I found out that um, I had breast cancer. It hit me in a really kind of traumatic period of my life. I was uh, just decided to leave a, an abusive relationship, at, you know, but I was kind of getting still pulled back and didn't really know how to handle it. Do not eat with your hands. I literally just took a huge bite of that. At that point, I was like, kind of realized I wasn't living. It was definitely probably the hardest moments uh, of my life. I needed to be better. When I started doing the races, it started a sense of empowerment um, came back to me. Um, and every time like there's the, you know, I look at a hill and I'm like, there, are you serious? They want me to climb that hill. And, and then you get to the top and you're like, I climbed that hill. I was broken for so long. Um, and every time that I, I do one of these events, my confidence and my self-worth brings me back to what I, you know, who I was before. Who I was before domestic violence, who I was before, before cancer. All right. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Tough Mudder events have kind of changed my life. They've changed my social circle. You're never alone. I mean, and if you show up to the start line, you have a hundred people that are your new friends. I've decided this year to um, run World's Toughest Mudder. It happens to be on one year um, anniversary of my cancer uh, free date. It's like that final test that I'm over all the junk that happened to me before. My goal heading into World's Toughest Mudder First, don't die. And second, I want to be on course for 24 hours. Even sitting here today, I don't know if I can do it. I've been training, I've been trying, but I'm definitely not, you know, the super athlete. I'm just 
I'm just me trying to be the best version of myself. 29-year-old Trevor Sykos is the favorite for the men's title at this year's World's Toughest Mudder. The former Marine, a dedicated ultramarathoner, has finished second and third in the past. This year, he's determined to win it all. Since my first Tough Mudder, through self-study, I've learned that you gotta have the uh, upper body of a rock climber and like the legs of a mountain runner or in the core of a strong man. Psychos is a study in contrasts. Friendly, but intense. A hardcore warrior who trains in the quiet calm of the Pacific Northwest. Every morning when I get up to work out, the world's toughest mother is my motivation. My weekly training and preparation for a tough mother is running six days a week. In that running, I try to incorporate mountains and hills as much as I can. My favorite runs to do is just going for max vertical gain. I'll find a nice trail that runs to the top of a mountain, and I'll just run and hike and get up to the top of that mountain as fast as I can. Running up mountains is one of the best things you can do to train for these races. When I first started obstacle racing, I was eating clean, following a paleo diet, but the paleo diet doesn't really go well with endurance sports. I was running on empty and cramping up really bad. Last year, where I actually came in second in the world's toughest, I was going mostly off high sugar, and that did not work out at all. Since then, I've picked up the diet of a triathlete, basically. Realizing that he was still able to pull through 95 miles, he's revamped a lot of what he's put into the nutrition side of it, as well as having that motivation to supersede that 100-mile goal. I get 100 miles in the world's toughest mudder in Lake Las Vegas on that course because it is the toughest course with all the swimming and hills. Eventually, I'd like to win the world's toughest mudder and be the world's toughest mudder. If I get both goals this year, it would be an amazing year and definitely surpass my ambitions. It's not a matter of being the best compared to other people. It's more about being his best. While Psychos is aiming for the men's title, in the women's competition, Hopes are high for Sarah Knight, who came out of nowhere in last year's World's Toughest to finish second, and who's since changed her lifestyle entirely to accommodate a career in OCR. She moved to Northern Washington State and built a simulation course in her backyard. The results have her confidence soaring. Having course out here has been like the perfect part of my training. It was something that I was missing that I didn't have. Moving out and getting 23 acres on my own with a house uh, was not possible, so I moved in with my parents. This setup would definitely not be possible without them. We knew she was into the racing part of it, and uh, I think once she got in her head, you know, 23 acres, we could do it. We could do it here. And it was just kind of, why not? I love watching her be happy. In world's toughest mutter, no one's ever alone on the course, and most of the competitors have their own pit crews. It's exactly what it sounds like, a group of supporters who are waiting after every lap for the athletes, ready to change their shoes, bring them food, and whatever else they need. Last year, Knight was on her own, but this year, her parents will be her pit crew. And the Seattle Tough Mudder, not far from their house, provides the perfect opportunity to test out the operation. All right. Yay. So I was looking at my times last year. And I have all the lap times and whatnot. And I added them all up yeah. and took a total of 23 hours and six minutes of running time. So that means I was in the pit on average for nine and a half minutes between each one. And so I want to try and shave that down to five minutes. Five minutes yeah. So last year was school, this year is serious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a two hour drive to the course. 
the knights arrive early to set up the pit. You know how this goes, right? It goes in a square. So good. Yeah. yeah. So six hours you're gonna run today. Yeah. Wow. Okay, food and energy drink on the yeah. when you come in. Go. Got it down. Good. Got it. Sarah breezes through the first of her three laps. That was great. I liked it. And then, just like that, mom and dad are on the clock. Wow, you're not dirty. You put some over that dirty. I guess we're not going to sit in that one. Okay. Just over here. <laughs> but she just lost a bunch of weight, Sarah. What? How do they know how much time I've got? About five, six minutes, maybe. Well, I should be out Next time, we're going to. Time's up. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Get up, get up. If the entire race is a dry run for world's toughest, she's doing the second lap in a wetsuit, prepping for the overnight dip in temperatures she'll experience in Las Vegas. But Seattle afternoons aren't exactly as chilly as Las Vegas nights. And we're overheating pretty much. Ah, you know what? Since I took this part of the wetsuit off, so much better. The rest of the lap is considerably more manageable, and she completes it with ease, only to discover when she comes into the transition area that her pit crew is nowhere to be found. They're going to get food, so I'm fending for myself. But that's okay, because I fended for myself last year in World's Toughest, so. <laughs> Knight concludes the third and final lap with no further issues. Her 30-mile training day is complete. There may be a few kinks to work out with the pit crew, but the challenge of 24 brutal hours in the desert has never been more enticing. I feel really good about World's Toughest now. Um, all, all this training today just makes me feel more confident than anything else. If there's one thing that separates the World's Toughest Mudder from any other athletic event, it's the unforgiving obstacles along the course that are created in secret and only revealed the night before the race. A few months after the initial scouting trip to Las Vegas, the Tough Mudder team travels to Pennsylvania for the next phase of their process, highly classified alpha testing. Alpha testing is where we take all the crazy ideas that we develop internally, and it's where we kind of bring them to life a little bit. And this is our sort of proof of concept grounds. We need for the railing. It's got to go up another two clips. In addition to actually constructing and building the events themselves, we're highly involved with the research and development. So a couple weeks before we'll get out here, kind of lay out exactly where we want everything to go, and then mobilize the guys and get going, start building. I thought these were all going to be round bars. Yeah. Yeah. The goal is to build obstacles that are safe, but fun and challenging. And after a few weeks, the giant wedgie, Funky Monkey the Revolution, Augustus Gloop, and Kong have taken shape and are ready for testing. So what we have today is a group of Tough Mudder employees. They're gonna come out here. We're gonna run them through the obstacles. Our goal here today is really just to see you know, see the obstacles in action for the first time. We want to see how people react, whether or not they can do them, work out some of the kinks. So we've got 10 obstacles out here today that we're going to run people through. We're probably going to pick five that are going to make it the world's toughest, and we'll carry those on to the 2017 season. This one we're going to test you guys. This is a base area feature. You're forced to kind of start this either with a friend or if you can pull yourself up, but teamwork's encouraged. Only if you're feeling comfortable should you go up to the top. Can I, like, step Can I fall? Too? Like, <laughs> In this situation here, it's too easy. I, I think run more cleats, so it's almost impossible. Yeah, yeah. If you've got a grip bar at the top, yeah. I'm not sure you need the top, because I think it's quite cool yeah. having the inverse triangle. Right. Hey, way to go, guys. We're going to hand out some gold stars after this. Yeah. The goal of this one is to, um, you know, it's supposed to be like a courage obstacle. It's supposed to inspire some fear. Uh, we found it's actually quite fun and refreshing as well, so that's a plus. But always go up, like facing out this way, because we want to see you from over here. 
Yeah. This is it. This is the one. That's great. Yeah. You have to put this on course. Yeah. <laughs> you have to put this on course. These are kind of the comments that you go for on this stuff. It's like people coming up and saying, well, that's got to go on course. We've got to have that. And it's not very common. You don't get it all the time. It is challenging. Like You kind of feel like you're in this kind of unpleasant power shower. But the team did well. And I have, I have the humble pie because I didn't think it was going to work. Look at those guns. Look at that. All that time in the gym. The team's commitment to their task is absolute. Ensuring the obstacles at world's toughest mutter will captivate every competitor in the field. There it is. Priya, let go of your arm. You'll make it. It looks far, but you'll make it. Just let go of your right arm. Yeah, Priya. There you go. Nice. Priya. I will. Oh. Don't swing. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Today was unreal. The group was great. The obstacles went really well. A couple little tweaks uh, in the next coming months, but these are these obstacles are nearly ready for World's Toughest Mudder. So we're ready to roll. Among the 1,500 competitors who descend upon the obstacles in Nevada in November, you'll find somewhere together a high school teacher, an executive at a research laboratory, and a corporate training manager. Casey Harris, Joe Van Dyke, and Walt Lyon are three of the most recognizable faces in obstacle course racing. They go by the collective name, Four Eyes, and their bond goes back to the grueling conditions of the inaugural World's Toughest Mudder in 2011. It's one of those cathartic experiences to be back here in New Jersey, because this is, this is the place that we originally met. We met uh, back in 2011 during the first World's Toughest Mudder, and uh, we met on course. And from there on, we just kind of stuck together. Joe's our workhorse. He's an Ironman triathlete. You know, he's this, if he were to run World Stuff as Mudder on his own, he would definitely be in the top 10. Chasey, he's, uh, he's our comedian. He's the glue that sticks us together, and, and he's always got a positive attitude. He's been doing this for the longest time, and uh, he's always there just to kind of pick us up when we're down. It took a little while for us to come up with our team name. We were on course uh, the second year we did World Toughest Mudder. Joe came up to us and he had a, a, a handful of glasses that said, here, put these on. I think it was from like a bachelor party or something. And we did about our third World Toughest Mudder uh, together as a team. And people started saying, hey, Four Eyes. From then on, we just kind of stuck with the name Team Four Eyes. As the trio began competing in more events, they came to realize that as much as they liked testing their own limits, even better was the reward of helping others on the course. And it was that realization that turned Four Eyes from a trio of like-minded athletes into a team that thrives at the heart of the Tough Mudder tribe. As we stuck together as a group, uh, we found that we were kind of the senior people in the community and we started helping people out. The next thing you know, Every world stuff is mutter. We're, we're staying in the water a little bit longer. We're staying at obstacles a little bit longer, helping people up. It's given us a little bit more purpose in the event. <laughs> world stuff is mutter is the one time of year that you find out who you are uh, and who you think you are, who you really are. It, it allows you to push yourself past the point where you thought that you had to stop. You get to these events and you see all these people, and you, you feel all this love. It's nice to just be able to help these people out and help them over, you know, and through these obstacles. They've arrived in Las Vegas from all over the world, prepared to run the race in their own way for their own reasons. So just uh, got off my flight from Denver, uh, arrived in Vegas, super pumped to be uh, getting ready for World's Toughest Mudder. I'm ready to represent Team USA, and uh, Chad and I are going to go out there and, and do our thing. This is a size big, so when my feet are fatter than what they are right now. Sand goggles, because, you know, a dust storm's not going to be fun. There's a lot of emotions. I mean, there's a, so much that's going to happen. Saturday isn't just a race. It's my one year cancer free. I came out to Vegas early, primarily so I could do a few runs out in the desert, get used to the air, the heat, and the terrain. I feel I'm definitely going to hit the 100 miles this year. I was so close last year with so many things going wrong. This year, I feel everything's gonna go right with this new nutrition plan. 
and I'm also feeling confident because I have trained really hard this whole year. Any little inch that you can make uh, in terms of preparation, in terms of the gear that you have on, is going to help you in that 24 hours. And I think the biggest key is for us to stay ahead of our core temperature yeah. and not let right. it fall down. Woo! All right! <laughs> The day before the race, the course is open to the athletes and their crews to set up the pit area. For Coach and E-Rock, the looming specter of the 24-hour challenge has done nothing to diminish their spirits. So what do we got here? We got, a, we got, our, we got our stuff. Boom. Watch out. Instructions. Who needs instructions? Pop the middle, and then when I say I popped it, now you guys go to the sides. So today is pit setup day. This is when we all kind of set our spots up and, you know, get to see in the daylight what we are uh, hopefully going to find in the nighttime. It's basically what it is. Watch this. Watch this. Boom. Boom. There we go. That was the fastest shelter I've ever seen in my life. Now we're ready for anything. The elements. While Coach's enthusiasm never seems to flag, he's approaching the race with a heavy heart. A good friend of mine, he passed away in an accident on a mountain. Uh, he always wanted a 50-mile bib, so I actually have a little bit of his ashes that I'm going to carry with me on course. And uh, if I could bring his wife home a, a brown 50-mile bib, that would be a giant success for my weekend. After all the preparation and all the anticipation, all that remains is the running. These athletes are a breed apart. They are seekers of a transcendent shared experience. It does not suit them to run a normal distance for a typical amount of time. They are instead looking for the point at which they will break and then pushing past it. They are members of a tribe ready to stare down the biggest, baddest course ever created at world's toughest mutter. It works better when you stare awkwardly at the person next to you. 